Hello everyone, in this sequence we're going to quickly present the debugger and the notion of breakpoints, the different breakpoints in Faro. What you'll see is that the system is alive and that we can communicate. We have to communicate with it and its objects. We don't work with source code, we work with objects, which have a state and receive and send messages. Don't be afraid of using the debugger. We can code in debugger, inspect the program while it's running. It's a powerful and really useful tool. I know several developers, myself included, who have a tendency to develop directly in debuggers. So a great deal of code is written in debuggers rather than in a code browser. The advantage of that is, while you're writing the code, you have access to the method settings, to the objects, to the variables. You can see it all and test it. You've all the data at hand to be able to test it while writing the code. The debugger looks like this. There's a title bar indicating the error message. Here's the stack, the call stack. That's to say, the call method. Here, we can see that this method, perform test, has called method test summing, which has called the method place which has raised the problem, does not understand. Here, we have the code of the area that's selected here. What's selected here is the method plus the dice handle class, so it appears in the lower window. And right at the bottom, we have different variables. All the variables accessible within the context of the execution underway, in order to modify the variables to inspect the objects, etc. It's a group of actions in that area that allows us to restart the execution of the method or dive into the code, or see line by line what's happening. When a debugger opens, closing it won't solve the problem. It's much easier to open the debugger, to look inside in detail at what's causing the problem, and inspect the call stack and objects, and fix the problem in debugger rather than close it and then guess why debugger opened. The debugger is your best friend. It allows you to communicate with all the context objects, whether it's the settings, the instance variables, etc. To check the state of all the variables and even modify this state. To send messages to check the state of certain objects or check how they're reacting. We can, of course, modify the methods on the call stack, saved, and continue with the new code without any problem, all without restarting execution from scratch. So if a method fails, we correct the method. We restart execution of the method, and the program continues. One way of debugging that's very frequently used is showing things on the console. We can see that this is really a poor way of debugging because you have to modify all the methods you want traces in and then modify them again to remove them when the problem's fixed. And then you have to know or have an idea where the problem, where the problem might lie or where it comes from, to know where to put the line and what to show. The other way of doing this is using breakpoints. A breakpoint is a place in the code where we'll indicate to Faro that it has to stop next time it passes this place. So the most simple breakpoint is halt now. Send the message now to the object halt, which is a class, which will immediately stop execution. From there, a debugger will open. We can see line by line what's happening, the state of the program, etc. So halt now pauses the program. We can restart it, but for now it's paused and opens a debugger with the current state of the application. So, halt now is very good, unless you put it in a method that's executed constantly, including by the system itself. You can have dozens of debuggers opening if you put a halt now in a place used by an opening debugger. So, you put halt now in the debugger's code. If the debugger opens, 
it will execute halt now itself, which will open another debugger, etc., recursively, and pause your system. In this case, we use halt once, which, once halt once is activated, stops once, pauses once, and all the subsequent passages through halt once won't pause the program. So we write halt once anywhere in the code. We activate it once. We execute the program. A debugger opens and halt once is immediately disabled. Another possibility is to stop after a number of iterations. We might stop after the tenth iteration. If we know that an element in a collection that interests us is in tenth position, it's not necessarily worth debugging the nine previous times for nothing. So we stop at the tenth iteration. Another possibility is to stop when a particular condition is true. So for that, we have halt if. Halt if either takes the symbol indicating a method, which has to be in the call stack for the debugger to open, meaning that if I put halt if print string, the dice faces code has to be called from the print string method for the breakpoint to activate and the program to pause. If can also take a block. We can put any bit of code in the block if it evaluates to true to make the debugger stop, for it not to open and the program to continue. Since the tests in Faro are methods in the call stack, you can put the test number so that a bit of code only stops when it's executed from a test. All of these methods, now, once, on count, and if, are methods in halt class. You can study the code, see what the code's done to it, and you can also add your own methods. Add your own kind of breakpoint according to your needs. So in the example below, I've coded a breakpoint called between and, which only stops the program when it's in between min time and max time. So this program will only stop. The debugger will only open between midnight and 2 a.m. You should know that the debugger is a very powerful tool. There are a lot of breakpoints already defined in the system. You can add as many as you like. To add a breakpoint, modify one method. The debugger opens, and you can see line by line what's happening. The breakpoints are really powerful, and you shouldn't hesitate to use them or the debuggers.